Right, so first thing you're going to want to do is get your motherboard out. Next up is the CPU. And gently, just letting gravity do its work, place it into the socket. Next up, we're going to install the RAM. If you're just installing two dim sticks, then you would do slot A2 and slot B2. And then you slight pressure on one side until you hear a click. And do the other side. Next up is the SSD. And we're going to be using a screw that should come with your motherboard. Take off the plastic from the thermal pad. And gently screw in that small screw. Remove the pre-installed CPU cooler retention module. Grab the AMB4 mounting bars, and also the package of spacers and screws. Attach the mounting bars. Make sure to follow the cooler installation directions for your specific CPU, whether it's AMD or Intel. Apply the thermal paste. If you have any excess paste, just take it off with the corner of the instruction manual. Next, take the heat sink out of the box. The screws of the heat sink should match up with the mounting bracket. Screw it to the screw threads of the mounting bars. Perform two to three turns on each screw, then repeat it till both are fully tightened. Plug the fans into CPU fan and also sys fan four pump. Adjust the wires. Take the screws from your case and use them to screw in the motherboard. Install any additional case fan. Remember that the face sucks. Take out your power supply, plug in the 24 pin ATX cable. Next, plug in the EPS cable. Just count the number of pins on the cable and the number of holes on the power supply. Finally, the Molex and SATA power cables can plug into where it says peripheral and SATA. Install the power supply in the back of the case. Locate and separate the cables from your case. Grab the cable that looks like this. It's for the USB 3 ports. Plug it into the USB 3 header on your motherboard. Next, we're going to plug in the audio cable. This will connect your front audio and mic jack connectors from your case to your motherboard. If you have a USB-C cable, you'll plug it into the USB-C header. This can be right underneath the 24 pin or somewhere near the bottom of your motherboard. If you bought additional fans, I recommend using what's called a fan hub. All you have to do is stick it to the back of your case, and once it's plugged in using one of the power supply Molex cables, connect the top fan header of the fan hub to one of the slots on your motherboard. Next, plug in all your fans. Keep it in mind where they're coming from and the best geographical slot for them. Now let's plug in the last set of cables from our case. You should find the corresponding pin connections on the bottom right hand side of your motherboard. The power LED plus will go into the top left hand pin. The LED minus pin is going to be right next to that on the top row. Make sure that the lettering is facing down on all these pins. We'll take the 24 pin cable, the biggest cable, and weave it through the front of your case. Plug it into the big socket on your motherboard on the right hand side. Now we can connect the EPS cable. Grab the cable labeled CPU and plug it into the 8 pin socket on the top left of your motherboard. Fitting might be a little tight, so try and maneuver the best you can. If you have any RGB devices, you're going to plug them into the 3 or 4 pin RGB headers located usually on the top right hand side of your motherboard. Finally, we're ready to install the graphics card. Make sure to install the GPU on the highest PCI slot for the best performance. Remove any protective covering your GPU might have. Gently grab your graphics card from the back and slowly line it up with the PCI slot. Slide it in until you hear a click, or the clip locks in place. Last but not least, we are ready to plug in the graphics card cables. 
PCIe. Grab the cable labeled PCIe and double check that it does not say CPU. As you can see, my graphics card has two eight pin connectors. I'll be plugging in two eight pin PCI connectors. If possible, you may need to unplug one of your CPU cables that is connected to your power supply and plug in a PCIe cable. I made this mistake and I was not getting any reading on my monitor of my PC and that was because I used CPU cables instead of the PCIe cables. Plug in the big power cable that came with your power supply, switch the power supply to on. Go ahead and plug in your monitor through the HDMI port in the back along with a keyboard and mouse. Whatever you guys do, do not use the display port until you install the drivers. Hit the power button and stand by. If your monitor turns on and displays something, then it means your PC is working. Nice job. You can move on to the next step. Go ahead and turn your PC off by pressing the power button. So now that we know where all the cables plug in, we can work on making the cables look pretty. Once you're satisfied with the cable management, you can close off the back with the side panel. If you have a clear side panel, make sure to clear off any plastic beforehand. And before we turn the PC on, we need to load the operating system from a flash drive. Make sure to download the Windows operating system onto the flash drive. You can find instructions linked below. The PC will immediately recognize the flash drive and it will take you to the installation page. Finish setting up Windows until you get to the desktop screen. Download the following drivers from your motherboard. If they're listed, go to your motherboard's manufacturer site. These should be in the support or download section. And if you don't see these drivers, it just means that it's not supported by your motherboard. Now, if you're using an AMD CPU or an AMD graphics card, then we're going to download the auto detect software from AMD's page. I'll drop a link to this down below. This will automatically detect what AMD component you have and it will install the correct and updated driver for your CPU or your graphics card. If you're using an NVIDIA graphics card, you need to download and install GeForce Experience. Once again, I'll drop a link to it below. Transfer all the files to the desktop or downloads of your PC. Do not install the files from a USB. Sometimes it can mess up the files. Some of these are a bit tricky to install if you're new to all this. Once you open the files, you're going to always look for the file name with the words setup. Double click the file and extract if necessary. And once it's done being extracted, double click on the setup file again and follow the instructions. Do this for all the files you've downloaded. Once all the drives are installed, we are ready to enable the XMP profile. Enabling this ensures that your memory is running at its advertised speed, in which most cases brings extra performance to your PC, especially if you're on a Ryzen system. So go ahead and restart your PC and continuously hit the delete key on your keyboard until you get into the BIOS. We're gonna navigate and find the section in the BIOS that says either tweaker or overclocking. You might have to go into advanced mode. It's usually F6 or F7, but it's always displayed somewhere in your BIOS. We're gonna look for extreme memory profile. All you have to do is enable it and set it to profile one. Afterwards, go ahead and hit F10 and save the settings. Finally, after you've enabled the XMP profile in your system's BIOS, feel free to customize the RGB colors to your liking using the driver that you downloaded. A video that really helped me out was how to build a PC step-by-step -step guide by TechSource. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. If your PC does not show anything, most likely you forgot to plug something in or you used the wrong cable. Go back one to one, making sure you've plugged in everything correctly. If all else fails, you may have to troubleshoot your PC and go and look at another tutorial. I've linked a really good video by TechSource on how to fix your really? PC that helped me fix my PC when I was building. A simple error, which was that I plugged in the wrong cable into my GPU. Odds are it's probably something small and simple, and you'll be laughing about this as soon as your PC is up and running. Go ahead and give yourselves a pat on the back. Building a PC is no small task, and uh, you guys got it done. It's a lot easier than you might think. Appreciate your time. Now get out of here and enjoy your new system.